Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today I want to talk about the worst, most disappointing things in comics in 2022, in my opinion. How many times can I say in? <laughs> Looking back at my videos, I don't go all negative. It's not, oh, the comics industry is dying and everything is horrible. However, everything will be horrible in this video because we're talking about comics. There's bound to be some series that are just lackluster. We can't be all sunshine and rainbows. We need to have a mix. If you want to see more positivity, however, definitely check out my last video where I talk about the absolute best thing to happen in comics this year and definitely look forward for my future videos next year where I will talk about the best graphic novels, collected editions, the absolute best comic book series of 2022. Until then, however, it's negativity time and it's time to talk about the worst most disappointing comics of 2022 before getting started hit the like button if you enjoy this if you're new to the channel hit the subscribe button let's get on with the video DC started off the year by cancelling the Wonder Girl series by Joel Jones so I think it's very fitting for me to start off my video with that Wonder Girl Yara Floor was by far DC's most popular character to come out of their Future State event and within weeks of her debut DC were already talking about CW TV series and stuff like that. Her two issues story arc from Future State actually needed second printings because come on you look at this by the way, amazing Jenny Frizen covers here. You look at this and it's pretty easy to see why she was so popular. The story itself was really nice, written and drawn by Joel Jones at first. It was a great introduction to the character and within a year DC botched it and messed things up. I honestly still can't explain what happened there. I did a review of the whole thing, including the Future State story arc and the main Homecoming story arc, all of them written by Joel Jones, as I've mentioned. She did the art at first, couldn't keep up sadly, because just look at this, absolute perfection here. But like I said, and in a continuation of Joel Jones' working relationship with DC Comics, things just didn't work out for them, and it really is a shame. I was hoping that DC would do more with the character here, but it's been a year and nothing. She keeps appearing in the Wonder Woman series and in Wonder Woman-related events, but... Uh, as having a, her own series, there's no news on that. And again, it really is a shame because Yara Floor is an absolute joy and we need more of this. Moving over to Marvel and we have Spider-Man, as in Marvel's treatment of Spider-Man. Honestly, sometimes I wish I could hate someone or something as much as Marvel hates their own character. But it really goes beyond that. Huh, nice pun there. It goes beyond that and it actually tells us everything that we need to know about Marvel themselves. So I think, in my honest opinion, that Marvel's decision of canceling Peter's and MJ's wedding and whole relationship actually was their biggest mistake. Yes, that is my opinion. I'm sticking to it. However, companies, especially comics companies, have done stupid mistakes in the past and they've rectified them. 
The fact is, Marvel refuses to do so when it comes to Peter and MJ because that was an editorial decision. And as we've seen, and as you can see, if you're following comics for like one month, that's enough. Marvel hates admitting their own mistakes. It's been, what, like 15 years? And we still don't have Peter and MJ back. And with the latest Amazing Spider-Man series, there's no hope in sight. And it's such a easy win for Marvel. Everyone wants it to happen. Just give the fans what they want. And still, Marvel just refuses to do so. Because that would mean admitting they messed up. Over 15 years ago, people move on. And yet, Marvel editorial still can't do that. The funny thing is, Joe Quesada was moved on, he was fired, but still Marvel is giving us this absolute garbage. The Amazing Spider-Man issue number one, honestly one of the worst issues of the year. People just complain about GRGR's art. Here's another hard take. I quite like it. <laughs> it's not bad because he has his style. This isn't like something done by mistake. He wants to draw that way and I always admire that in an artist. So people complained about GRGR style but uh, they kind of missed the actual point. The writing here just horrible, man. And just so stupid. Just look at absolute embarrassment. And again, that doesn't even matter. What does matter is Marvel refusing not only to give the fans what they want, refusing to admit their own mistake, doubling down on it, and it's just pathetic. Seriously, it is. Not to mention, man. So, they started off this with everyone hating Peter and Spider-Man. And, oh, what could it mean for the whole Marvel Universe? And we are like, what, 10 months in? We are right in the middle of a new Spider-Man event. And... People moved on, characters moved on, that whole thing was like, oh, it doesn't matter, everyone loves Spider-Man right now. And it's like, come on, what? They didn't have a plan. They were just going off, shooting stuff towards the wall, and nothing stuck, actually. They're going in blind, and this is their biggest character. It's Spider-Man, and they keep messing it up. So yeah, one of my biggest disappointments this year, Spider-Man, the whole thing, man. Next up we have Aftershock Comics filing for bankruptcy, but honestly, I don't really care for that. Instead, I will use that as an excuse to talk about the biggest disappointment in comics in 2020. That's right, we are going way back, and here I have the We Live series by Aftershock, starting with what was actually my favorite issue of that year, We Live issue number one, I absolutely love this. This was one of my first reviews that I've done on this channel, and as I've mentioned then, I know the last pages of this issue by heart. Even going back now, this issue still brings a tear to my eye. It's just so incredibly beautiful. As the series went along, however, it was apparent that they just wanted to use this as a gateway towards a new superhero universe, as if we needed more of those. And 
looking even back then, looking into Aftershock, it was apparent that their whole business, they were just using comics to get into Hollywood. And I mean, that's <laughs> what actually happened, you know? It's a huge shame because, again, the first issue of We Live, my favorite issue of 2020, one of the best issues of that year. But as the series went along, it was apparent that, no, this wasn't going to be it. The Miranda brothers just, I don't know. Uh, again, huge shame, but... We see it right now with people going, oh, how could this happen? If you knew comics, if you've read comics for like the past few years, you knew this would happen eventually. And here we are, Aftershock Comics, filing for bankruptcy. And here's a preview of the next year when Vault Comics will be filing for bankruptcy. I have here the picture of everything. The first three issues of a five-issue miniseries. These came out at the end of 2020, beginning of 2021. And still, Vault just couldn't finish off this series. And they keep insisting that, oh no, it's still going on. We'll be finishing it very soon. Keep in touch. Mark my words. At the beginning of 2023, when Vault Comics will be filing for bankruptcy, this will be why. <laughs> I do want to mention though, go check out my review of The Devil's Red Bride and definitely check out that miniseries. One of my favorite things I've read like ever. Incredible samurai story, also by Vault Comics. But honestly, they didn't give us a sequel to that, so yeah, good riddance, Vault. I've done a lot of reviews of Catwoman comics on this channel, definitely check those out, starting with the most important ones, Catwoman by Joel Jones and Catwoman by Ram V. Both runs started off just amazingly, however, as the series went along, in both cases, DC editorial put Selena into needless, mindless events and just ruined the whole things back to back with both runs. It was a huge disappointment every time. Just as the next run by Tini Howard was a disappointment, however, this didn't start off great. This just started off a whole mess and it continued to be so. Tini Howard can't write. I would excuse that, but she doesn't understand Selena, she doesn't understand Catwoman, and that's just inexcusable. When you're writing a Catwoman series, Catwoman by Tini Howard is the worst Catwoman run ever made. Yes, and it's by far the worst. It's not even up for discussion. This has been an atrocious year for Catwoman fans. And honestly, Tini Howard takes most of that blame, rightfully so. She, like I've mentioned, she doesn't understand the character. She over-sexualizes Selina in just a gross way, putting her in a relationship with a psychopathic murderer. And come on, would Selina actually do this after all her evolution during the past years? Absolutely not. The worst thing is that she keeps bringing Bruce back and it's like this just gross trio. And I mean, <laughs> I have a review of Mirka Andolfo's Sweet Paprika and I've mentioned NTR stuff in the thumbnail for that video. Tini Howard actually puts that stuff in this series 
and it's so gross, man. We are not reading Catwoman. We are reading Teeny Hower's gross fan fiction for Selena, and it's an absolute mess. End it already, DC. Please, for the love of God, we can't keep getting these sort of issues. It's just gross. And continuing the misfortune for Catwoman fans this year, we have Batman Catwoman by Tom King, the biggest disappointment in comics for me in 2022. An absolute mess. Tom King has lost it clearly. Listen, I liked his Vision miniseries. I liked his Mr. Miracle. But even back then, with Mr. Miracle, it was quite clear that the man just knows one thing, and he keeps writing that one thing. I even liked his Batman run in the beginning. I liked his batman Catwoman relationship. I loved that second annual. But after the wedding lie, he went off the rails big time. The fact that he fired his own editor just should have told us everything, because everything he's done with Batman and Catwoman, with his DC series, has been an absolute mess, and it keeps being an absolute mess. Every single series that he writes it's just pathetic at this point. I don't know, I honestly don't understand how DC keeps giving him work. Especially after this mess. Almost two years for a 12-issue miniseries. Not understanding the characters. Not understanding Batman's relationship with Selina. Not understanding his own relationship for the characters that he started. I don't know how he could mess things up. But man, this whole thing just reeks. Listen, Tom King at this point is a sad, pathetic man. And every single page that he writes, he just begs for the long sleep. It's not entertaining to read at all. It's downright depressing. It needs to stop. Because what we have here in Batman Catwoman, the art is great. Clayman, of course, doing an awesome job. But it's a shame that he had to um, draw Tom King's story not understanding Catwoman, making her out to be, by the end, a rude, manipulative, just horrible person with her own daughter in her relationship with Bruce, maybe hooking up with Joker, I just don't know, I don't want to think about it. Again, Tom King missing the point in a huge way here, man. What even was this? It was the biggest disappointment of the year. That's what it was. <laughs> and don't even get me started on having to read it when it came out, issue by issue. On top of the delays, the whole story takes place in three different timelines past, present, and uh, future, and it's just, it's impossible to read, honestly. <laughs> it's such a big mess from a storytelling perspective. I mean, forget Tom King messing the characters. He messes up the storytelling. He can't, as a writer, he can't write. <laughs> honestly, this is just sad, pathetic, gross, a missed opportunity, and 
the weird thing is that's actually Tom King in a nutshell. The art, however, like I said, props to, to Clayman, didn't disappoint, but man, avoid this, and honestly, avoid everything that Tom King does, because um, this isn't it. And that was it for my video on the worst, most disappointing thing in comics in 2022. If you enjoyed this, hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. I have a lot more videos on comics. If you want to see more positive thinking, just look at my last video where I talk about the absolute best thing to happen in comics this year. Definitely tell me what your picks were for the worst or best comics of the year and look forward to my future videos where I'll be talking about the best graphic novels, collected edition and overall the best comic book series of the year. Good stuff coming up in 2023. Definitely look forward to that. I'll see you all in my next videos. Bye.